So I just want to start out by saying Spotted Lanternfly, we've been talking about it for a few years. And most of the information that I'm going to be presenting today comes from my colleagues that work at Penn State, Heather Leach and Danielle Kirkpatrick. They're both entomologists and they sort of lead the Spotted Lanternfly research team because they live in the area where the epicenter of the invasion occurs. So Spotted Lanternfly is an invasive insect. It's native to Asia and it was first detected in the Mid-Atlantic in 2014. And uh, it's a flown feeder like most plant hoppers and it causes severe, severe economic damage to grapes. Uh, and the reason why we're talking about it again today is because uh, if you've been following some of the local news, you may have seen that a 4-H participant in Kansas turned in his insect collection, which contained a pinned spotted lanternfly. And that did launch a federal investigation. And it looks like that kid was not traveling to Pennsylvania in the last few months and that he might have actually collected that in the state of Kansas. So a reminder, the update, this is what the nymphs look like. The adults, you know, the brightly colored pink elytra with the black spots. The nymphs sort of look like ticks, but again, they're sort of, when they get larger, they get this uh, abnormal red coloration. So if you look at the key characteristics, they are somewhat easy to identify from our native insects. The reason why we've been talking about them for a while now is because the females have this really unusual behavior where they lay their eggs almost indiscriminately on any flat surface, including metals, stones, and wood. And uh, they found that the eggs have been laid on railroad cars and semi-tractor trailers. And that's why we understand that the, the potential for hitchhiking and moving to new territories is pretty high. Additionally, the adults like to hitchhike as well as the eggs. They found that with wind tunnel tests that the the adults can withstand and sort of hold on to materials with 65 mile per hour winds. So that's including cars as well. Uh, so both the adults and the nymphs and the egg cases are hitchhikers. And uh, this is just a video showing you the damage in grape and massive uh, populations because they're an invasive insect and they don't have a lot of natural enemies here. So that's why we, uh, we call this enemy free space. Uh, so they have higher populations in the invaded regions. And here you can see uh, it's feeding on the phloem and squirting out this honeydew. Uh, that creates further problems down the line with sooty mold accumulations. So all the damage thus far, all the economic damage, the real damage in agriculture is uh, centered along the vineyard. So uh, you have a lot of leaf curling, honeydew buildup, and eventually you have vine death. So spotted lanternfly has actually killed entire vineyards in Pennsylvania. So that's pretty disturbing. Obviously, growers react with increased insecticides, and that's, uh, that increases the cost of production. And it's pretty severe key pests. That's what it looks like after a spray. That's how many are on the grapes. And uh, again, even when they kill these a week later, they're moving in from natural habitats also. So you have to continually spray for this pest. There's just more shots of the enemy free space and the high populations that they experience in, in the mid-Atlantic. What I do want to stress, though, right now, currently, there is no reported damage to other agricultural commodities except grape. Uh, you might see spotted lanternfly occasionally in field crops and on vegetables, but most of the time they are not feeding and they aren't causing damage. However, they do cause damage to trees, so they feed directly through the hardwood of a lot of our tree species. They become an economic nuisance pest for homeowners in the mid-Atlantic. So this is a picture of a, a backyard in Philadelphia. And of course, uh, that's not what anybody wants to experience in their living space. In addition to being a nuisance pest, when they get to this high populations level, they can actually drain and kill entire trees. So that's pretty impressive. And again, it just comes back to that high population level. Missouri does have a conditions or environmental conditions that will be suitable for spotted lanternfly to establish. So that's why we're concerned about it and we're always looking out for it. The USDA is currently investigating biological control methods. There are some fungus that are reported to kill them, but it's very, very early to see whether that will actually be a viable approach for management. The USDA is also doing the classical biological control investigation where they go to the region where the insect is native and they try to find parasitoids that attack only that species. And again, this creates a long study system. So they have to study these wasps. They have them in a quarantine facility in Beltsville, Maryland, 
and they won't be released anytime soon. They have to be positive that they aren't going to attack any of our good native species. So I'm just letting you know that there's a lot of funding and a lot of research being concentrated on the spotted lanternfly, but the likelihood of a quick fix management option is not anytime soon. One thing to do when you're scouting in your local areas, there does seem to be an association with this tree, Tree of Heaven. It's also an Asian invasive tree, and we find that they spotted lanternfly prefer to feed on this tree. So that's something to look for. The Missouri Department of Agriculture is being extremely proactive. So, so they have been looking for spotted lanternfly throughout the state of Missouri every single year, even during COVID. They had scouting teams going to counties with railroads or vineyards, and they've been scouting hundreds of locations and they report that. And obviously there's not, not been any found yet in Missouri. If you do see something that looks like spotted lanternfly, this is what we are asking you to do to report that information to the Missouri Department of Ag. So you can kill it, take a picture of it. They're pretty slow, clumsy flyers, so they don't escape well. And additionally, Missouri Department of Agriculture also has an information flyer with more information. And then the Penn State Extension site listed here has all the information you might need about management, life cycle, in biology and ecology. And again, Penn State's leading this because they have the populations in the field uh, that they can study. So the main take-home message is uh, we aren't in a panic mode yet, but it's something that we want folks in Missouri to be on the lookout for. And again, if we catch a population early enough, it may be uh, eradicated with a large response before it spreads to our vineyards in Missouri. And with that, I'll take any questions. How do the spotted lantern fly respond to wild grapes? They also feed on wild grapes. They actually aren't too picky when it comes to cultivars. There's a little preliminary studies that show that, you know, they feed on any kind. So that it's still early, uh, but they will feed on wild grapes. Are there any lookalike insects? So, I mean, that's uh, dependent on your level of uh, entomology, right? So for me, I can say no, because I look at these insects every day. Uh, but there are some Arctic moths that look similar. Ticks look similar to the nymphs. Um, if you look at the adults and you look really closely at that pink pattern and the polka dot pattern, there isn't too many that really resemble that quite so well. So again, you can take a picture and ask us to ID it. You can send it to my email or uh, probably Tamara's or the Department uh, of Agriculture in Missouri. What types of trees do they attack? They attack a lot of different tree hardwood species, but there does seem to be a preference for maple black walnut, birch, and willow, but that's not the total list. So they, they do, and again, when they're at those extreme population levels, uh, they have to kind of pick any tree that's available to them when there's that many competition for resources. But yeah, maple, black walnut, birch, and willow seem to be highly preferred at this point in the early discovery of their ecology.